Today, the number wangos are at it again. Hi again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Well, I've noticed post covering finance and property news. Well, Australian employment surpassed expectations in June and the jobless rate held at a lower revised rate, underlying the labour market's resilience to rapid interest rate increases. The jobless rate remained at 3.5%, having hovered in a range of 3.4 to 3.7% since June last year, according to the ABS data that came out on Thursday. The economy added 32,600 rolls from the month prior. That's more than double estimates. And employment has now risen in nine out of the past 12 months. This data increases pressure on the Reserve Bank to resume raising rates, with money market bets now implying a better than 50% chance of a hike to 4.35% at August 1, when they meet again. The Australian dollar, by the way, extended earlier gains, rising to 68.35 US cents. And three-year bond yields jumped, heading for their largest one-day increase since July the 7th. The lucky country keeps on delivering strong data, said James Wilson, a senior portfolio manager at Jameson Coote Bonds in Melbourne. The result is supportive of August being a live meeting, he added. While the RBA's 12 hikes over the past 15 months are slowing demand in the economy, Thursday's data suggests more work might need to be done to loosen the labour market. RBA Governor Phil Lowe has said the board will closely monitor the economy and inflation and has warned that further rate rises may be required to tame persistent inflation. Employment strength has been a key factor in the RBA's confidence that Australia can indeed avoid a recession. Thursday's figures show that annual job growth eased to 3% from 3.1% at the start of the year. The pace is expected to moderate further given that job advertisements are now edging down. We expect that weakness will emerge in the labour sector as we move through the second half of 2023, said Annika Thompson, Chief Economist at Credit Watch, citing recent redundancies at major firms including Telstra, Lendlease and Westpac. As business conditions continue to weaken and profit margins fall, headcounts will get a lot of attention, Thompson added. The central bank is forecasting unemployment will climb to about 4% by the end of the year as rising borrowing costs drag on economic activity and it estimates the jobless rate will need to reach somewhere around 4.5% to achieve sustainable inflation around the 2-3% target. And of course the RBA will release its quarterly update of forecasts on August the 4th. Now looking at the number in more detail, that Unemployment rate remained at 3.5% in June, season adjusted. That's in line with the updated figure for May. And the ABS said that with employment increasing by around 33,000 people, and the number of unemployed decreasing by 11,000 people, the unemployment rate remained at 3.5%. The rise in employment in June saw the employment to population rate remain at a record high of 64.5%, reflecting a tight labour market in which employment has recently increased in line with population growth. In addition to there being over a million more employed people than before the pandemic, a much higher share of the population is employed. In June 2023, 64.5% of the people over 15 years were employed. That's an increase of 2.1 percentage points since March 2020. The participation rate, though, fell 0.1 percentage points to 66.8% from last month's record high and it fell 0.2 percentage points for women to 62.5% and rose 0.1 percentage points to 71.3% for men. Monthly hours worked increased by 0.3% in June 2023, which was again faster than the growth in employment, which was at 0.2%. Over the past 12 months, hours worked increased 4.7%, outpacing the 3% increase in employment. The strength in hours worked since late 2022 relative to employment growth shows the demand for labour is continuing to be met to some extent by people working more hours. Consistent with the stronger growth in hours worked, full-time employment increased by 380,000 people over the past year, while part-time employment increased by 30,000, the ABS said. 
The underemployment rate remained at 6.4% following a 0.3% rise in May. The underemployment rate is still low in historic terms, around 2.3 percentage points lower than before the pandemic, the ABS said. The underutilisation rate, which combines the unemployment and underemployment rate, fell 0.1 percentage point to 9.9%. The trend unemployment rate remains low at 3.5% for the 11th month in a row. Employment grew by 39,000, 0.3% in June, and the employment to population ratio remained high at 64.5%. Hours worked increased faster than employment in trend terms, 0.5% compared with 0.3%, and the proportion of people working full-time rose to 70.2%. That's the highest level since December 2012, and two percentage points higher than before the pandemic. The rapid rise in full employment has been particularly pronounced for women, rising from 54.2% of employed women just before the pandemic to 57.9% in June 2023. That's the highest it's been since 1994. And while the pace of employment growth has shown very few signs of letting up, this has not compromised the quality of jobs growth being seen. Around 86% of those new jobs over the past six months have been for full-time work as opposed to part-time work full-time having risen 218,000 year-to-date compared to 36,000 year-to-date for part-time. Now, this is not wholly different in the dynamics that we saw during the earlier stages of employment recovery from COVID-19, but it stands out in contrast to the pre-pandemic years when full-time employment constituted only a slighter majority of jobs growth at around 60%. Emphasizing this point further, seasonally adjusted hours worked remains in a strong uptrend, once again exceeding the growth in employment with a 0.3% lift in June. Having risen 3% year-to-date, the gains in hours worked is well above what was observed over the same period last year when it was 1.9%. This compares to a more modest increase in the share of employed men working full-time, which increased from 80.9% before the pandemic to around 81.5% in June. That's where it was back in 2018. It's also worth noting that the unemployment rate in New South Wales fell 0.1 percentage points to a record low of 2.9% and declines were also seen in Queensland down 0.3 percentage points to 3.6%, Western Australia down 0.1 percentage points to 3.6% and Tasmania down 0.7 percentage points to 3.5% while the unemployment rate held flat in Victoria at 3.7% a nudge up slightly in South Australia, up 0.2 percentage points to 4.2%. Overall, the June Labour Force survey has provided yet another robust and well-rounded read on the labour market. The tone of the survey at this stage is consistent with the view that the unemployment rate will probably rise only to 4% by the end of the year, given the near-term resilience from labour demands and robust growth in labour supply. And of course, one of the reasons why people are working more and more hours is because they're in financial pressure. And one way to do that is to work harder and longer. But here's another take, this time from Roy Morgan, who said that in June, unemployment jumped 1.9% to, wait for it, 10.3%, though there was a decline in underemployment in June, down 0.5 points to 9.3%. Ray Morgan's unemployment figure of 10.3 is almost triple the ABS estimate and is closer to the combined ABS unemployment and underemployment figure of around 10%. Michelle Levine, the CEO of Ray Morgan, said unemployment jumped 1.9% to 10.3% in June as a significant fall in part-time employment and more people joining the workforce led to the first increase in the unemployment rate since January. The latest Ray Morgan employment estimates for June showed unemployment rising rapidly up 314,000 to 1.57 million, that's 10.3%, up 1.9%. And there were far more people looking for both full-time jobs, up 94,000 to 608,000, and part-time jobs, up 220,000 to 964,000 in June. And there was a further 1.41 million Australians now underemployed, which is around 9.3% of the workforce. Overall, Unemployment and underemployment in June was 2.99 million or 19.6% of the workforce, just below the recent peak, about 3 million, which was 20.2% that was reached earlier in the year, in January, in fact. We've highlighted for months, they said, 
that there's been a rapid increase in the Australian workforce over the past three years. This trend has continued in June, with the workforce increasing by a massive 715,000 compared to a year ago. That's the second biggest increase on record. Although there's been new jobs created compared to a year ago, the workforce growth has outpaced the economy's job creation as we deal with high inflation and rising interest rates. Overall employment is up 268,000 compared to a year ago, while unemployment has increased by 447,000. In addition to the surge in immigration, the key factor influencing the Australian economy at the moment is inflation and the increases in interest rates designed to reduce it. The RBA has increased interest rates on 12 occasions since May 2022 to 4.1%, highest interest rate there since May 2012, and many economists are predicting further interest rate increases to come as soon as next week. The latest ABS monthly inflation figure for May shows inflation is still present in the Australian economy, with prices rising 5.6% from a year ago. Despite this representing a decline from a month earlier, this is still far higher than the RBA's preferred target range of 2-3% over the course of the cycle. This is likely to keep pressure on the RBA to continue to increase interest rates. A big factor set to influence the Australian employment market over the next few months will be the Fair Work Commission, the FWC, decision to increase the minimum wage from July 1. The FWC increased the minimum wage by 8.6% to $883 per week, while over 2.5 million workers on an award rate will receive a wage increase of 5.75%. The increase to the award wage impacts over a fifth of Australian workers, while less than 1% of workers are on the minimum wage. The increase to the award wage will be a challenge for those employers, most impacted by rising inflation and interest rates, and is slightly higher than the latest ABS CPI figure of 5.6% in the year to April 2023. The Australian economy is finally balanced at the moment, with a surge in employment accompanied by high inflation, and interest rates still rising as they work their way through the economy. Looking forward, Australians will be hoping the federal government and the RBA are able to ensure the economy continues to grow despite these pressures having an increased impact on many. The Roy Morgan survey on Australia's unemployment and underemployed is based on weekly interviews with Australians aged 14 and over, and they were done between January 2007 and June 2023, and includes 5,955 telephone and online interviews in June. The underemployed are those people who are in part-time work or freelancers who are looking for more work. And a person is classified as unemployed if they are looking for work no matter when. The results are not seasonally adjusted and provide, they say, an accurate measure of monthly unemployment estimates in Australia. Households for the ABS survey are interviewed one month for eight months, with one-eighth of the sample being replaced each month. The first interview is conducted face-to-face and subsequent interviews are then done on the telephone. The ABS classifies a person as unemployed if, when surveyed, they've been actively looking for work in the four weeks up to the end of the reference week and if they were available for work in the reference week. And the ABS classifies a person as employed if, when surveyed, a person worked for one hour or more during the reference week for pay, profit, commission or payment in kind, or even if a person worked for one hour or more without pay in a family, business or on a farm. The ABS estimates are also seasonally adjusted. So, Roy Morgan says, for those reasons, the Australian Bureau of Statistics Unemployment Estimates are different from the Roy Morgan Unemployment Estimates, but founder Gary Morgan's concern regarding the ABS Unemployment Estimate is clearly outlined back in a 2012 letter to the Australian Financial Review, which, by the way, was not published. So three quick points here. Firstly, there is a particular methodology that the ABS uses, which effectively leaves a lot of people not counted in the numbers. And therefore, I think the Roy Morgan is a better estimate. Secondly, the trend where more people are looking for more work is being driven by significant household financial pressures. And that includes more women going back into the workforce, more part-time work, as well, of course, more full-time jobs. And thirdly, of course, migration being so strong is pumping up the total working population. And so there is a big chase on at the moment between the rising population growth and the amount of employment that people are getting. And at the moment, population growth is winning 
over employment growth. And the bottom line is this. Almost certainly the RBA will see this as another reason why rates must go higher. So we'll know that in a few weeks time. But there is a lot of number wanging going on here, which means that like it or not, these numbers are at best rubbery and at worst wrong. Now, if you're buying your home in Sydney's contentious market, you don't need to stand alone. This is the time you need to have Edwin Almeida from Ribbon Property Consultants standing alongside you. Buying a property is both challenging and adversarial. The vendor has a professional on their side. Emotions run high, price discovery and price transparency are hard to find, and then there's the wasted time and financial investments that you make. Edwin understands your needs, so why not engage a licensed professional to stand alongside you? With RPC, you know you have experience, knowledge and master negotiators looking after your best interests. So shoot Ribbon an email at info at ribbonproperty.com.au and if you use the promo code DFAWTW slash Martin, you can get a 10% discount offer. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.